You are now tuned into the Boxing Bros. This is G Block. Every Sunday is G Day. I'm Caden. I'm here with my co host. I'm the commissioner, Trill Dollar Bill. You already know how I'm rocking this LLG for life. It's time to get activated. That's right. It's time to get activated. Hey, also, it's time to get some motion going. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Was that out right now? Nah. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie. So, I forget where I was. We went in line. Oh, yeah, gas station. I okay. went in to just get, like, some to drink. The line was, like, taking forever because the cashier didn't know what she was doing. And so, once the line started moving again in my mind, I was like, we moving, moving. <laughs> we got <laughs> right, yeah. So, the first topic we're going to discuss Oh, boxing bros is Jake Paul says he wants to fight Mike Tyson next, and then he wants to fight Alex Pereira, the light heavyweight champion in UFC. So we're going to take a listen to what he had to say, and then we'll discuss it. So um, this is what Jake Paul said immediately after his fight. Alex Pereira, Alex Pereira, you said you want to box. I'm the king of this. I'm the king of this. Come over. We can make it happen. I want you, Alex Pereira. You want the UFC light heavyweight champion, Alex Pereira? Indeed. Indeed. I just beat a a BKFC champion. I beat multiple UFC champions, and he said he wants to box. So, Alex Pereira, after Mike Tyson, let's make it happen. You heard what he said. After Mike Tyson, let's make it happen. So, just to be clear, Mike Tyson tweeted like the days and hours or whatever till they fight so true dollar bill he's still supposed to fight iron mike tyson next i think it's going to happen in november because amanda serrano and katie teller are scheduled to fight in november i think uh netflix is going to pick the card back up with mike tyson and uh amanda serrano and one last thing before i bring you in trill uh there's also tweets from conor mcgregor saying he fired mike perry after losing to uh, Jake Paul from Bare Knuckle Fighting. You can weigh in on whatever it is you feel like discussing, my brother. The floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> if Connor wanted to fire him, for, then maybe Connor need to get in there and be Mike's replacement for November because there's no way that Mike Tyson should be fighting a Jake Paul. Mm-hmm. Let the old man retire, go sit on the beach somewhere, and, uh, you know, and relax you know i don't like that fight with uh mike tyson and jake paul um i stand on it jake paul you know go fight connor and to what uh jake paul was saying about you know fighting alex Pereira, shout out to jake paul for watching the boxing bros my brother Caden told him to roll uh, what he should be doing you know what i'm saying stick to your niche Fighting MMA guy, that's your thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see, you still selling out the building. You know what I mean? Fighting non boxes, that's your thing. You know what I mean? So stick to it. You know. And if uh, I don't see nothing wrong with that, if guy want to come in there and and because he says boxing's his first love, the homie Alex said that boxing's his first love. So if that's the case and you want to get in there with Jake Paul, I don't see nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? It's what Jake's been doing. Now Jake is starting to, you know, say it after after with that last uh, episode that we had when we was talking about Jake. Now he's starting to really say it. First he was moon, oh, I want to fight boxes, real boxes, acting about this, this, that. Now he's, you know, saying what it is. You know, I'll fight all the MMA guys. You know, I got beef with Dana White. I'm going to make it. <laughs> I want to beat everybody on the UFC. That's what he's trying to do. Um and he's putting behind some seats. I don't see nothing wrong with that. I do see something wrong with him beating up on the elderly Mike Tyson. I feel like everybody's saying, man, they love Mike. You know what I'm saying? They love Mike. You know what I mean? And they remember Mike from the 80s. This is not the 80s anymore. You know what I'm saying? The 80s were a long time ago. Long, long. Hey, 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 bro. <laughs> I, I'm saying for, for someone to be a professional fighter in the 80s. Yeah, true. 80s was a long time. Think about he it. was in the 80s. If you were if you were a professional fighter in the 80s. And you still exactly. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It was a while ago, my brother. Um, but uh yeah, man. Um yeah, Jake Paul, keep doing what you're doing, man. You got a a, a, a the niche right there is taking out the MMA guys. If they want to step up, you take them out. You know what I mean? So 
I ain't mad at you, Jake. Do what you do. And uh, I see how um, – shout out to you too, Jake. Um, I know we criticize you when you do in certain moves and when you do bad things, but I also want to salute you when you do good things. You know what I mean? The love that you showed to the young homie that took his first loss, I thought that that was super dope. And I like how you, you chant around boxes and stuff like that, and I think that that's super dope also. So uh, mm-hmm. shout out to you, Jake. Now, you brought up some great points. And just the a lot of what we've said on this show has come to fruition. We're going to uh, see in, in, in a second. Because some of the things we're about to discuss, we kind of talked about it way back. If you just type it in the search engine, you'll see. But, um, yeah, Jake should just stick to his niche. He's the thorn in the MMA fighter side. And he can make a good living as long as he keeps beating them up. Because they're going to be people in the MMA community who are going to finally want to see someone from MMA beat them. And Alex Pereira is a pretty good boxer. Like he, he, uh, there, there's some boxers out there who are saying like, "Yo, he got hands." So there are boxers out there who feel like Alex Pereira is legit with the hands. So I think it will be his toughest test. And if he goes on to beat Iron Mike Tyson in his old age, which we're about to talk about age coming up at least i am in another segment because i saw a lot of excuses about age in the comment section the last time last sunday from one of our topics so we're going to talk about that in a second but if he does that that's going to be a huge fight but yeah so many people want to be things that they're not jake doesn't have to be the boxer who fights the best boxers because he sells out arenas doing what he's doing is doing his shows and his shows are entertaining because he's knocking people out so again you got a skilled guy like Shakur who's putting people to sleep people are saying he's boring right so Jacob fight an MMA guy and knock him out and people will say oh but you're not fighting a real boxer what is that telling you people are looking for reasons to complain like either you're going to be entertained or you're not going to be entertained but Shakur did over a million views on ESPN and Jake Paul still selling out arenas. So people are complaining, but they're watching. As long as they're watching, Jake, keep making that money. You are the guy who beats up the MMA fighters. And you know what? Boxers are starting to like them because they're like, listen, you MMA guys can't even get past Jake, right? When you step in a boxing ring. You have Francis Ngannou who did well with Tyson Fury. Y'all got a little hyped up. Threw him in there with AJ in we haven't seen Francis and Ghanu since. So, yeah, I think Jake has found his niche. Hopefully he sticks with it. But just to talk about that Mike Tyson fight, it shouldn't go on the record. But they're going to put it on the record. They're going to allow Jake to fight old Iron Mike Tyson under altered rules where, again, they were saying it was going to be two-minute rounds and all these things. You saw Mike Tyson can't, could barely walk a stick. He just had a health issue. They're going to throw him in there with Jake. Anyone still thinking Mike Tyson has a chance is crazy. But my, but but Jake Paul is going to be able to build his reputation off of beating the old Mike Tyson. And I don't hear too many people complaining about that. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. Keep that same energy. All right. So that's it. Yeah. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is what are the chances Amanda Serrano beats Katie Taylor in November? So she had a fight. She got a second round stoppage. I think a thing with Stevie Morgan or something like that. Um, a trill dollar bill. Were you impressed with Amanda Serrano's performance? And based on that performance, do you think she has a chance of defeating Katie Taylor in November? Shout out to Amanda Serrano. Hey, girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Amanda Serrano remind me of, you know what I'm saying? One of the, the older, you know what I'm saying? Girls from the hood that still got their figure, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Amanda Serrano. You know what I'm saying? I seen her, man. You know what I mean? But I was watching. I seen her. I seen her with a little smile. I thought she was smiling at me through the TV. Shout out to Amanda Serrano. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh, look, I think, and um, Katie Taylor. Every it's no, it's no question. Everybody that's been watching this show knows I'm a huge Katie Taylor supporter. That's my girl, go Katie. But I was calling for Katie to retire 
after the first Amanda Serrano fight. I was like, woo, we got one. Time to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I was still calling for her to leave, especially after that loss to Chantel Cameron. Even when she went back in there, and I was like, why is she still going? And she revenged that. I was like, she should just retire. No. She still feels like she got something to prove. Um, I know we have said here on this show before that we think that she was slowing down or missing a step. Um, I've been seeing it. And for some odd reason, Amanda Serrano, um, even though she's up there in age as well, she has got a, a spark has happened with her you know a lot of things haven't been sitting right with her. i guess that katie taylor fight didn't sit right with her. it kind of give her a, her second win um i think it's a it's a good chance you know that she she goes out there and being fresher i feel like it's a good chance that she can go out there and, and get that win november I think uh, my Katie has stayed around a little too long, and long for my liking, you know. But Katie's still boot, you know what I'm saying? That's still boot, you know. But I just think she stayed around too long, you know. Um, yeah, I think it's just something about Amanda just seems like she got her second win, like she's just more fresh or something. Something happened, you know what I mean? But so yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, Think that Amanda, I'm, I will go Amanda on this one. 45, 55. Yeah, so I remember going into the first fight. I had stated that I saw some slippage in Katie Taylor, and that's why I was picking Amanda Serrano. And people roasted me in the comment section. And I stated, if this was Katie, primetime Katie, the best form of Katie Taylor, I don't think Amanda Serrano would win. But I felt like Katie Taylor was slipping. And I felt that way because I saw her getting hit by people who she would normally outclass. And you got to understand, like, we saw Katie fight in person, Amanda Serrano's sister in, in Boston. And, like, we were cheering for Katie. So we like Katie. But, again, people make things about other stuff because that's what they tend to do. Cause that's what they watch boxing for so that's what they tend to do but i felt like katie taylor was slipping and she fought amanda serrano and we've debated that i thought amanda serrano won you thought katie nicked it g thought um katie nicked it so hey again good close fights are going to generate debate that's a beautiful thing but like you said we were saying after that she has nothing left to prove Get up out of there. But then she went and she fought Chantel Cameron. And Chantel Cameron got up. And then she won and got and she beat Chantel Cameron. But that was very controversial. And a lot of people are like, yeah, you got preferential treatment on that one. And now we're talking about her fighting Amanda Serrano again. And I just have to say, people can make it about more than what it is. Everything I'm saying is based strictly off of boxing. The wars with Delphine Pursun, the first fight with Amanda Serrano, her loss to Chantel Cameron, and even the second fight with Chantel Cameron, where she took a lot of punishment in that fight. I think Katie Taylor's been in too many wars. And I think Amanda Serrano is coming to knock her out. Because remember, that was a tale of two halves, that first fight. And, Kate, and Amanda Serrano slowed down, and Katie was able to utilize her boxing. But I think that Amanda Serrano is going to go in there, and she's going to stop Katie Taylor. And I hear some people talking about uh, Sky Nicholson as someone who can beat uh, Amanda Serrano. Amanda Serrano is champion in multiple different weight classes. Like, Amanda Serrano is just fight in boxing fights in UFC. So they want Amanda Serrano to go down to 126 to fight uh, Skyle Nickerson. No, she can move up to 140 and come see Amanda and she can get knocked out too. Yeah, yeah. Amanda been doing this since 116, <laughs> baby. <laughs> she been doing this since 116. You know what I mean? 
The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros. Vasily Lomachenko says he's not motivated to fight Javante Tank Davis. Is it a duck? Now, we're going to take a look at the reports, and then we're going to discuss it. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at ESPN Ringside. And what ESPN Ringside reported, talks between Javante Davis and Vasily Lomachenko have broken off an official involved in the negotiations told at Mike Coppinger after Lomachenko decided to take off the rest of 2024. So that's the report. And then it continues. Lomachenko ends talks with Davis. Eyes return in 2025. Quote, Loma is not in the mood right now. He doesn't have the motivation at the moment. Lomachenko's manager, Aegis Kilmas told reporter Steve Kim on Friday. He's taken off. He wants to spend more time with the family. So that's what, you know, Egis told Steve Kim, a reporter, that Lomachenko is looking to take time off with his family. So Coach mm-hmm. Kenny from Javante Davis' team, he responded to that, and here's what he wrote on social media. If Lomachenko can't get motivated by getting a chance at being the face of boxing, his team needs to hang his gloves to where he could never reach them again. He's done. That's what he had to say. Trill dollar bill. As you know, reports were there was negotiation between uh, Vasily Lomachenko and Javante Tank Davis for a mega fight. Now you hear Loma's not uh, motivated. What's your reaction? Um, a lot. Um, I was looking at it from a different angle. Everybody, I, I, I went on boxing Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that when you go on there, you go on there with a responsible adult. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's crazy on boxing Twitter. <laughs> I was going on boxing Twitter, and it was like 50-50 on boxing Twitter. Boxing Twitter, one person was like, Loma, you know what I'm saying? You duck tank, you know what I mean? What are you doing, duck and tank? And then it was like, you know, tank, now you want to fight Loma? I feel like the negotiations was gone and everybody was going back and forth and everybody was, I think Lomo was not motivated by negotiations. You know what I mean? Maybe that's what it is. Matter of fact, I forgot to say this. Let me hold this G walk with me. Um, I feel like maybe he's not motivated because of what happened with negotiations. Maybe the back and forth, the drag, he said, you know what? I'm going to take some time with my family. And then we can all figure this out. If he wants, maybe he can go fight one of these other champions. Let him go fight Shakur. You know what I'm saying? And we'll figure it out. Because I heard that he doesn't want to fight his countryman who has the other belt. You know? So maybe Loma figure, like, y'all go and figure that out. You know? And then after y'all figure that out, I'll come back to the table after spending some time with the family. If that's so... uh, I'm not mad. He's playing the old guy, young guy route. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the older guy. You young guy, go out there, collect all the belts, and then we'll make it happen and, 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 and do it like that. Um, I don't – I personally – I don't – I wouldn't call this a duck. Maybe it's called uh, being smart. You know what I'm saying? Maybe uh, playing chess, you'll say, you know? He sees it's a situation that's a cool and Tanker going at him. And he figures, hey, let them go at it. And then, you know, I, you know, <laughs> kind of like what they did to Anthony Joshua. Let Anthony Joshua collect all the belts. You know what I'm saying? Like Loma was doing. Remember, Loma was collecting all the belts. Mm-hmm. Made it easy for people. You know? So maybe he figured, all right, this time maybe let this young guy, let him collect the, all the belts and then me, maybe me and him can get, him, get it on. Let him fight Shakur Stevenson. Or let Shakur Stevenson fight the, his fellow countrymen and then let and, and unify 
then him and Tank get it on, and then maybe him and Tank can get it, you know, or vice versa. I don't know. But uh, maybe he's just thinking about putting less wear and tear, you know, and letting these guys go at it, and then he go. Maybe he's thinking us uh, uh, strategically, you know. Um, we know that these fights were supposed to be made before, or there was people wanted these fights made before, you know, but it was never no real negotiations. Um, so I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't think none of these guys, I just think it's more of uh, maybe it's chess, you know, is they looking at this as chess instead of checkers. No, I hear what you're saying, but. It smells like a duck to me. <laughs> and I got to be honest about it because, remember, we've been in this situation before with Vasily Lomachenko, and I, I didn't think it was a duck because he was elevated to franchise champion, and then he took the fight with Teofimo Lopez. So to me, to say he ducked Devin when he took the fight with Teofimo Lopez, to me, it was like it was a stretch because it was almost like at the time, Teo was actually the one knocking people out and Teal was the one who the fans were excited about. So you can't say he ducked Devin to take the more dangerous, more exciting fight. So that was my take on it. And eventually he ended up fighting Devin Haney anyway and losing to Devin Haney. Although I scored the fight for Vasily Lomachenko and I thought he beat Devin Haney. So at that time, I didn't think he was ducking. But the reason why I got to say it smells like a duck at this particular point in time is Vasily Lomachenko has always stated his objective was to be undisputed, that he wants to be undisputed. He cried about it because when he lost to Devin, although he should have been undisputed, because in my opinion, he beat Devin, um, he, he was upset because his goal was to be undisputed. So it's like, OK, you have a second chance at this now. You have a strap. Tank has a strap. You can fight Tank, and not only can you collect another belt and unify, but you could also become the face of boxing because Tank is selling pay-per-views. Now, you could get into a debate about who's the number one pay-per-view attraction. Tank has one mega pay-per-view fight under his belt against Ryan Garcia, and the rest have been mediocre or average, but still, he's up there. He sells in pay-per-view. Him, Canelo, Anthony Joshua, there aren't too many like them so Vasily Lomachenko hasn't done well on pay-per-view so this would be his opportunity to do that but he's saying he's not motivated you can get motivated for Devin but you can't get motivated for Tank to me Tank's the biggest opportunity that you can get Tank's the guy look at Frank Frank is living the life off of a Tank defeat mm. Tank and Frank is buying jewelry Frank is like, you know, like you said, you got to talk to Frank different now, all because he got knocked out by a tank. So this is what a tank fight is doing for people. And Vasily says he's not motivated by it. So for me, it smells like a duck. Now, I get what you're saying with the strategic aspect of it is he could step back and let tank fight someone else to unify. Right. And then let tank collector belts and then jump in and, and and then just for one fight one night for all the marbles, <laughs> right i get that but you're still ducking the fight because they want to make it right now and you don't want to make it right now which makes you a duck now there's one thing that i want to state when well, people say you brought it up to oh well javante ducked uh loma back in the days or whatever right that's what people are saying people are saying and if you rewind the tape, we called that a duck then too. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that like, okay, one good duck deserves another. No, no. Two ducks don't make a, a goose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it just makes a quack. <laughs> like, it's quack, quack at each other. So no one's saying that there wasn't the opportunity for tape back then and he didn't take it. But that doesn't excuse Loma for not – for not taking a fight right now. One thing I just want to jump in on, my brother, is I saw in the comment section uh, last week people talking about how, oh, Loma's old now, and they're saying that I'm wrong for saying that I don't want to hear any excuses about the fight. Let me tell you something. Oh, and, and they're like, oh, you're being you're not being objective if you're acting like uh, 
Vasily wouldn't have done better if the fight happened when Vasily was younger. I never said that. My point is, Vasily still got enough in the tank to where he stopped Cambosis, where he beat Nakatani, where he beat Devin, in my opinion. So why would I look at Vasily like an old man? when he's been performing very well in my eyes. So if Tank beats him, he deserves credit. I just want to point out a few facts. Floyd Mayweather fought Canelo. Floyd was 36, Canelo was 23. 13-year age difference. Now, you mean to tell me, right, that if Canelo would have beat Floyd at 36, people would have been like, oh, Canelo beat the old Floyd. Oh, you got to give. No, everyone would have celebrated. Everyone would have been happy. Instead, they make an excuse. Oh, he beat a baby. He beat a baby, Canelo. Canelo wasn't ready yet. So let's say Vasily would have beat Tank back then. Would you have given Vasily credit? If, if back when they originally were talking about making the fight, when Tank was young and he was a baby, you would have given Vasily credit for being Tank, right? I would have. Although Tank would have been a baby. Like people make the excuse for Canelo. You know what? There's never a perfect time to make a fight. There's always going to be an excuse one way or another, but they're both still got enough left in the tank. Bernard Hawkins was 43. Joe Kelzaki was 36. Seven-year age difference. People still celebrate Joe Kelzaki beating Bernard Hawkins, although that was a controversial fight because a lot of sporting outlets actually scored it for Bernard Hawkins, 114-113. But Kelzaki won. And a lot of people celebrated because before the fight, Bernard Hawkins said, I'll never lose to a white boy. So they celebrated. They celebrated the 36-year-old beating the 43-year-old. I didn't hear nobody saying anything about age did. Okay. Then Bernard Hawkins fought Joe Smith. Bernard Hawkins was 51. Joe Smith was 27. 24 year age difference. Joe Smith knocked Bernard Hawkins out of the ring and people celebrated. They celebrated the 27 year old knocking out and beating up on the 51 year old. They were happy. Oh, well, he said he'll never lose to a white boy. Now look at him. So you're happy that this, this 27 year old knocked out this 51 year old, but I'm supposed to feel sorry that 36 year old Vasily Lomachenko is being asked to fight 29 year old Tank. A seven-year age difference. This is what we're complaining about. No, I don't want to hear it because greatness is expected to do great things. Vasily Lomachenko is great. That's what you keep saying. He's held to the same standard as Floyd, the same standard as Bernard, the same standard as Manny Pacquiao who went and won, beat uh, beat uh, Keith Thurman to become the oldest welterweight champion. Nonito Donaire who went at is the oldest man to win the bantamweight title. He's held to those standards. So I don't want to hear none of this age excuse stuff. All you're doing is trying to soften the blow for Vasily Lomachenko, and you're the one who's not being objective. My point is, you step in that ring, I expect you to do a job, especially if you're great, and if you don't, no excuses. You know what he need to do that will motivate him is have Bob call Turkey Alice Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey had a sheet. We'll invite him over to the palace, put his hands on him, give him some bread. <laughs> you know what I'm give him some bread, you know what I'm saying? And motivate him to get into this fight. He said, Come on, Loma. You got this, Loma. <laughs> <laughs> it's the money will motivate Loma to get in there <laughs> get sick. Throw some M's at him. You know what I'm saying? Turkey <laughs> had a sheet. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is Anthony Joshua and Carl Frotch settle their feud. So this is one of the things I was talking about, bro. When we discussed this, the feud between Anthony Joshua and Carl Frotch and how Frotch made these videos talking about Anthony Joshua or whatever. So, you know, Carl Frotch has uh, his YouTube channel, Frotch on Fighting. So he announced on his YouTube channel that he and Anthony Joshua squashed the beef. So this is a Michael Benson reporting. Carl Froch and Anthony Joshua have now settled their feud. Froch has revealed, quote, I think we're seeing eye to eye. We've had a good exchange of messages. He's got respect for me. I've got a lot of respect for him, and I wish him all the best. He actually said he'll be coming on my channel in the near future. Froch on fighting. So... 
according to Carl Frotch, they exchange messages and they have mutual respect for each other. And we will see Anthony Joshua on his channel. Trill, what's your reaction to the change and the shift and everything now that uh you know him, him and AJ are friends now apparently and, and yeah. he's on the channel? You know what I'm saying? Uh that hate wasn't a good look. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That 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 hate gun backfired. <laughs> you know, that hate gun backfired. That's what it is, man. Um, I always say that. Uh, show love, you get hugs. You show hate, you catch slugs, and that's what happened with Carl Froch. He put all that hate out in the in the in the, in the energy out there in the universe, and he got it back. He got it back, you know, coming to AJ like that. If anything, you should have been holding him down, you know. And I bet you, after AJ comes on his channel, I bet you he's going to be one of the biggest AJ supporters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> My brother's AJ. <laughs> I ain't mad at it, man. My man Carl Frost doesn't seem to like it. Yeah, you know, to me, I think what Carl Froch was saying went a step beyond normal criticism. Like when he was talking about how he quit against Andy Ruiz and you'll never see Carl the Cobra quit. But then to see how quickly he turns around and announces that they've squashed it and Anthony Joshua is going to be coming on his channel. It just goes to show you, man, you can't always listen like he was he was going at AJ. He was going after him, and now all of a sudden it's like, we're cool, he's coming on my channel. It's like, what changed so quickly? Oh, we exchanged messages. Like, yeah, but some had a change in you because you were coming at him a certain way. Now, some people in our comment section brought up Rob McCracken, how he trained Carl Frotch, and it could have been, uh, you know, he doesn't like Anthony Joshua because of what was happening with Rob McCracken. But my thing is, Rob McCracken is his own man. Rob McCracken can fight his own battles. So to me, I do think it's a bit of what you were saying, Dollar Bill, kind of like he saw that what he did and the things he said about Anthony Joshua wasn't being met with positivity and that it kind of you know, it kind of rocked the boat. There was some Frotch supporters, too, who were coming at us like respect, like to protect Frotch, <laughs> but it still didn't need to be that way. You're both two guys who represent the uk you're both two legends of the of the sport so you shouldn't be feuding that way in public at least but remember it was only public because frotch made it public aj never made it public frotch was the one who spilled that over to the public so i think he's trying to do some damage control my only thing is aj why go on the channel you squashed it you did whatever you going on the channel to me that's a bit much because now it's like you gonna give this man some views or whatever. It's cool if you want. It's cool if you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. But that's what AJ is saying. That's what you wanted, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, bro. If you if you wanted some views, you want to be seen with the You could have just texted me and asked me to come on the show. You know. But yeah, to me, it's just taking a high road. And sometimes, like I've been saying with fighters, like you don't always have to take the high road. Like I saw, like recently some fighters are refusing to do interviews with certain people or whatever and some people are like oh well, that's wrong or whatever i don't think it's wrong like if you cross a line if you disrespect someone they shouldn't have to sit there and be like you know and i saw i can't remember most recently it was one fighter someone asked him a question and he said i'm not even going to answer this question and just move on to the next question and i was happy for him like they should do that more and to me if aj wants to do it fine but like you don't have to be too nice because I feel like this is this is what hurts AJ, like the nice guy stuff. A dude takes a shot at you and then you forgive him and then you go do a show. And then I just think like that's where people start looking at AJ like, you know, he's too nice. Like, all right, you squash it, you squash it, but you don't have to go on the show. That's just my personal opinion. Though. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's damn if you do and damn if you don't if you AJ. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, either way, they're going to they gonna find a way. <laughs> The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is DDD, do drugs discreetly, juicing for the Anthony Joshua fight. As you know, Daniel Dynamite Dubois, Triple D as they call him, you know, um, 
It was reported that he didn't enroll in VADA testing, although now there are conflicting reports coming out about this. And there's some concerns because there have been former uh, fighters and former opponents of Anthony Joshua who's tested positive. You have um, the obvious one, Gerald Big Baby Miller, who tested positive before their fight, which led to a replacement in Andy Ruiz beating Anthony Joshua. But there was also Robert Hellenius who tested positive after his fight with Anthony Joshua. So Michael Benson reported Robert Hellenius has now been banned from boxing for two years after testing positive for clomiphene in a UCAD test following his defeat to Anthony Joshua last year. Hellenius said it must have come from consumption of eggs and chicken meat but could not provide sufficient evidence. So he tried to get the Connor Ben excuse, but they didn't give it to him. I mean, they gave it to Connor, but they didn't give it to him. Actually, UCAD didn't give it to Connor. Uh, just Eddie gave it to Connor, really. But all right, so uh, here's the conflicting report. So this is coming from uh, Queensbury Promotions Twitter, where Queensbury Promotion responded to Anthony Joshua's team. So first, Anthony Joshua's management team said, evening at Queensbury, any update? on why at Dynamite Dubois isn't signed up for at VADA testing yet? Question mark with the looking eyes emoji emojis with the shoulder shrug. To which Queensbury Promotion responded, Daniel is enrolled as VADA will confirm. So they're saying that Daniel Dubois is enrolled. Dollar Bill, I'm asking you, based on what's out there, and this is just your opinion now, so we don't, we don't want you to be PC here. We want the uncut, real, trill dollar bill. Is Daniel Dubois do drugs discreetly Dubois, and is he choosing for the AJ fight? Only chance he got to win. <laughs> Only chance the got to win. I'm sorry, man. I know they're going to be like, oh, trill going at the D hard. Hard. <laughs> He don't like the boy trail, man. He, he wild. You know what I mean? I don't care what you say. The boy ain't got a chance. So that's why <laughs> if he pops for something, he, he knows what he's up against. So if he pops for something, we all know why. You know? Because he he got he knows what's up. <laughs> he knows what's up. Um That's all I got to say. Look, we've had this discussion before. And again, this was one of our very first topics, like when we started the show about how prevalent is PED use in the sport of boxing. And I remember you saying it, G said it, like G felt everyone was on something. Mm -hmm. And like, it just is the nature of the beast. And, you know, my position is be good or be good at it. Like, if you don't test positive, then I can't call you a drug cheat. But if you test positive, then you get whatever's coming to you, right? So as long as Daniel Dubois doesn't test positive, he's in the clear with me. Like I don't examine these fighters. I don't. I don't monitor the supplements they're taking or whatever. You know, I I I do know certain things. And I see certain like physical changes in these fighters. And I'm just like, okay, like that's very interesting. Like someone pointed out, um, that was Oscar Duarte said he thinks that Ryan Garcia cheated with him. And he said, cause he saw Ryan and Ryan looked a certain way. And then like three days later, he was just lean and lost like a lot of body fat. And Oscar Duarte was like, wow, how could you do that so fast? And to me, it's just evident certain things just, you know, you know, bro, as as someone who's been in the gym, who who works hard, who works out, like if someone loses twenty four pounds, and and then they regain it in one day, and then you're running and you're doing some, and they're going like there's no tomorrow, <laughs> not being tired, that that's skeptical, because you know how hard it is to lose like three pounds. It's like it's not easy to lose three pounds in a week unless you're you know morbidly obese but like for a regular person losing a pound and a half a week losing two pounds a week that's something to be proud of you talking about 24 pounds and then overnight regaining it and then competing in strenuous workouts that the average person can't 
12 rounds of boxing, hitting, like, so, again, it's easy to, you know, dump on certain people, but if you ever notice uh, um, Shannon Briggs, when they tell him people pop positive, he's like, oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> you ever hear how they, oh, he's cheating, oh, he's on drugs, oh, well, this person's cheating. It's really, they know what's up in the sport of boxing. It's more of a game, like, okay, we're going to see whose chemist is better, whose team is better, let's, you know, but in the end, like I said, be good or be good at it. As long as you don't pop dirty, there's nothing I can say. But if you pop dirty, then I'm going to talk my trash. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is Frank Warren closing in on a broadcasting deal with the zone. So Frank Warren is closing in on a broadcasting deal with the zone. We're going to take a look at uh, what it says, and then we'll discuss it. So uh, here it is right here. It says, Queensbury set to join the zone, question mark. The zone is reportedly closing in on a long-term deal with Frank Warren's Queensbury promotion for UK and global rights to their shows. And this source is Time Sport. And it says Queensbury's present contract with TNT Sports expires next year. So next year, Queensbury will be a free agent. And apparently TNT is not looking to re-sign Queensbury promotions because they're not satisfied with the fights that they've put on. So Frank Warren is currently in talks with the zone to join the zone, which currently has Matchroom, Eddie Hearn, and Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Excuse me, Trill Dollar Bill. What's your reaction to this? That was the help him out with that money on the back end but when they did the competition at 5v5. You know, Frank was like, you don't even have to pay me. Let me just get up on there. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of giving me that meal, you know, let's work set it now. Nah, I think this is it's, it's business. It's business. Shout out to Frank. Frank's been been doing his thing, you know. Um, ever since the 5v5, it seemed like Frank's been on timing with everything. And it seems like uh, his company has been got a second win after that 5v5. I ain't mad at Frank Moore. You know, he's the one that slipped uh, Daniel Dubois or something. You know what I'm, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. He say, "Listen, man, listen, you gotta give a good showing against AJ." You know what I mean? But uh, nah, I'm not mad at Frank. Frank's been doing his his, his thing, man, and uh, he's gonna be making more deals. He's gonna be making more deals. I think like the elephant in the room is huge, and and people aren't really talking about it. But, you know, if this was Al Heyman, because you hear about it, like, why is PBC only put on, like, shows? Because they're not trying to lose money anymore. They understand that putting on a whole bunch of shows that aren't going to generate revenue is bad for business. So now PBC is trying to only put on the shows that they know will generate revenue. So that means less boxing events, although they recently announced that they have another event coming up. But... You have a platform like the zone that's losing money and TNT is not in the business of losing money, but the zone needs to put out fights. They need to put out, they need, because they have a subscription because they're subscription base. So because they're subscription base, they have to keep putting out fights. They have to justify taking $30 a month from people in America, however much people pay across the globe, and then also charge it for pay-per-view. So the more promotional companies they have, the better. But the elephant in the room is that boxing is in danger and a lot of people are struggling. And TNT doesn't want in on the business because TNT is not trying to lose any money. So you get Frank Warren to the zone. Now, this is the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is Turkey Alashik. Turkey Alachik is slowly but surely running boxing. Like, Turkey Alachik is Frank Warren's boss. He's Eddie Hearn's boss. He runs the zone. He runs the networks. He's making it possible for them to survive. Without him, they would be struggling. Without Turkey Alachik, there would be no 5v5 there would be no day of reckoning there would be no undisputed there would be none of that right. it would be 
would you say, bro? Ride a season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had season. Yeah, it, it would be, it would be a lot of struggling, a lot of promoters trying to figure it out. But see, what Turkey Alashik has done is he's given his money to make these fights, and so now everyone's willing to work together to save their companies. So you got to think about it. For someone like Frank Warren to be willing to work with Eddie and for someone like Eddie to be willing to work with Frank, for them to be willing to risk their biggest stars and do all this stuff, it's all behind Turkey Alashik, right? And you got the zone now saying, okay, we'll give you the platform. And remember, Frank Warren was once one who was clowning the zone. Like, well, nobody watches that app. How many people even see the fights on that app? Like, now he's talking about moving to the app. And really what's allowing that to be done is Turkey Alashik. And Turkey Alashik stated his objective and his goal is to buy out all the promotional companies, right, and just have him run boxing. And in many ways, this is a sign of him doing that because you're seeing Turkey is allowing for a lot of things to happen. Right now he has Frank. Right now he has Eddie Hearn. You see, they're working so well together that Frank is like, yo, Eddie, I'll come join you on the platform. That's good. They can make fights, but you still got guys who want to hold on to their company, like Oscar De La Hoya being defiant with Turkey Alashik. He's talking to him, but he hasn't really sold any of his fighters and put on a car with Turkey Alashik. And you got guys like, and you got Al Heyman and PBC still trying to do it on their own. But if they cave, if they cave, the elephant in the room is Turkey might run boxing and he didn't even have to buy these promotional companies. So it's it's very interesting to see how Frank is, is willing to, to join the, the zone umbrella now with all the work he's doing and everything. If PBC hits rock bottom, if Golden Boy hits rock bottom, it wouldn't surprise me if they all join under the Turkey Isle Sheik funded umbrella. And, and, and will that be better for boxing or will it be worse for boxing? We'll have to discuss that at a later date. Turkey Isle Sheik. <laughs> Everybody getting filled on that. <laughs> I was going to mention what you said, bro, about the breakaway road. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you want your company to do better, Eddie? <laughs> You gotta have to help yourself. <laughs> My man had Tyson with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> he was uncomfortable. Tyson Fury was uncomfortable, man. You gotta watch that thing and then look at Tyson Fury and put his hands like <laughs> all the way. Tyson Fury moved all the way over. He was like, come in. And then the other dude, <laughs> <laughs> the other dude he just grabbed his hand. <laughs> <laughs> they try to tell us, oh, no, it's because how they do it. Listen. <laughs> hey, listen it is what it is, <laughs> man. Slap the motor shooter. Hmm, come here. Come here. <laughs> 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 Rubber Tyson's back and shit like his one finger <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah, That's why Tyson was at that pub face planting. He was like, the things I had to do to get this money. <laughs> <laughs> he called the Usi like, hey, man, Usi. <laughs> <laughs> Uzi <laughs> was like, hey, I ain't going to that meeting. Y'all can have this IBF belt. <laughs> I ain't meeting over Turkey out of sheep. Y'all can have this belt. <laughs> That's when he made that video. I got a special surprise for you, AJ and Daniel. <laughs> Yo, how are you thinking about that? <laughs> I got a special surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the Alice Sheik party. 
<laughs> For real, that's what he's gonna come out with. Boxes is gonna come out with some I've been turkey <laughs> out of shit. <laughs> All I wanted to do was make the fights happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, it started one interview. I was just speaking to my opponent and he was rubbing my thigh. And I thought, this is a little weird. But then he moved up to my hip. <laughs> and I was like, hey, what you doing? Where's your shirt? <laughs> so yeah, the she's a wild dude, man. We making this fight happen. I have my friend here, the Gypsy King, tasting, <laughs> and then he blows in his air. <laughs> oh, shit. It's crazy. Check out, he's a wild boy, and they gonna be yeah, like. Oh. That's just his culture. That's just how he is. <laughs> what about my culture? What about who I am? I'm not going to jeopardize who I am. No, ain't nobody. I done seen. I I thought I was honestly starting to believe that it was true. And to I seen it on, on, on Boston Twitter. Other people was like, no, we're not like that. All of us ain't like that. <laughs> Someone out there, make a turkey a la sheep touchy Philly compilation of turkey <laughs> dip. Rubbing fighters the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. 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 And their families, too. But uh, <laughs> let's just stop, Trill, because, I, you know, everything we do upsets someone. So I don't want to upset anyone. We just having fun, people. That's it. Just a little learn, learn, learn how to live, laugh, and love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is the FaceTime between Ryan Garcia, Shakur Stevenson, and Keyshawn Davis. You know, they had a little FaceTime. We'll talk about it. Uh, we're going to take a look at it, and then we'll talk about it after. Oh, language warning, definitely. These dudes will say all types of swears. So if you're with someone who shouldn't be hearing it, pause it and play this later. What's up, nigga? What's yeah, up? What you up? What you, you up, up? Both at the same time. Nah, hey, call. Cool. Fuck on. Hey, hey, Ryan, why you keep... Why you keep talking down about black people, bro? For real. Nah, bro, that's old news, bro. Everybody knows that wasn't even my thing. You already know I ain't going to try to bring that up. Don't try to start that narrative. I ain't, I ain't on none of that. That shit, we were just all joking. It was, it was, it was stupid. I'm I never fuck do that, nigga. Is you going to fight me, nigga? Bro, I will drop you, bro. I'll make you shit Will you hands. fight? This, this nigga drunk. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we talking to two drunk motherfuckers right now, bro. We can't take a serious. <laughs> Who that fat nigga right there? <laughs> 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 Get out this dick, nigga. He got that BBC. Oh, you gay. <laughs> hey, fight me at 140, nigga. No, no, 144. I'll do it. 44? Fuck it. Come yeah, on, bro. Come on. I'll fight you at 144. Hey, fuck, fuck it. I'm with it, nigga. Uh, bro, I'm banning. Bro, I'm banning boxing. Oh, you they banned. Oh, I forgot oh, yeah. they banned you. Why you was cheating, bro? Damn. Bro, sorry. Sugar, now you know that. Why I did not cheat to beat that. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, what is I that? I'm gonna take a shot with you. I'm gonna take a shot with you, yeah, bro. Nah. Yeah. Honestly, bro, I think you're cool. Nah, nah, I think you're cool too, bro. Yeah, I still gotta whoop your ass, though, my boy. No, nah, it's fine. You, hey, you could, you could try though. You could definitely nah, I'm gonna fuck you, you up. You could try. All right. You could try. <laughs> All right, oh, stop that hey, shit, bro. You could try. Hey, I'm gonna touch your body, stupid. nigga. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna end up shadow body, nigga. And you don't like body shots. I'm gonna end up shadow boxing. I'm gonna be like. Yo, where's going in those shadow box? He know he's gonna be fighting the ghost, nigga. <laughs> nah, bro, I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'll bite your balls off. I'm not kidding. What? I'll bite, I'll bite nah, your balls. bro, get this nigga out of no, here. No, I'm being real, bro. I'll bite your balls off. <laughs> bro, can everybody stop saying I'm doing cocaine? I don't do cocaine. It's alcohol, marijuana, and shrooms. Honestly, I think that's shrooms. Bro, that's the bro. It literally like makes you think at a higher level. <clears throat> so a lot in there. <laughs> Dollar bill. That was just a chopped up version of the live. I don't know if you saw the actual live, but there was a lot of stuff that was said. What's your reaction to that, to that live? It was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. It was a lot. Um, you know. Hey. I don't even want to get on these. I, man, I like, I like, I like Keyshawn and I like Secure, Secure Stevenson. I really do. Um, 
it seems like this was basically like uh, the kids clowning and and all that. I don't know. Ryan said it makes the shrooms make a big on a uh, different level. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, wild, right, wild. Um, yeah, as a kid, you know, all it did was make me laugh, 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 and laugh. So I don't know if I was making anything on a high level and promoting the drug use to the to the kids because that's not what's up. Um, mm -hmm. And then it was with the Keyshawn was trying to address a situation to get some clarity. And they, it was just a lot going on, man. Um, Keyshawn and Shakur Stevenson, it's, you know, Keyshawn is one of these guys, right? Keyshawn is like, yo, I would never fight Shakur Stevenson. You know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. That's my man's. That's my man's. She called Stevenson was like, if they gave me the right bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be the weirdest thing. It's like, this is my bro. This is my friend. She called Stevenson was like, he cool, but he cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, he was like, it seemed like it's his man, but he don't be reciprocating the love back like how Keyshawn be reciprocating the love. I'll be showing the love. He don't be reciprocating the way Keyshawn be showing the love. But um, there's a lot. I think Ryan needs to go seek the help. Obviously, he's not. He did an apology, how he was going <laughs> to rehab and going to speak to somebody. I just seen this uh, FaceTime with these guys, and none of that was apparent. He's still talking and acting like the same old Ryan, you know. Um, and people was giving him a passport, you know. You see how Shakur cut off his, well, his friend, friend. He cut off his friend, friend, to be like, yeah, forget all with a Keyshawn saying, when we gonna fight? You know what I'm saying? I want some money. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Keyshawn, you know, he was like, all right, I'll be quiet. But when Shakur stops talking, I'm gonna start talking again. <laughs> 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 Listen, <laughs> he basically told him to shut up. He was like, I'll fight you. Because <laughs> I'm talking about me and Ryan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll fight you at 148. Me and Ryan, it's grown men conversation. Man. You know what I'm saying? Go pick up my gym bag. You got my laundry you got to go pick up. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I... I just that's all I got from that man. I can't wait to when Ryan really goes seek the help. Cause nobody's holding him to the fire. You know, he's gonna do something now. You see, right after he apologized, he went there and calling him the H to the is O. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now you see him getting on here with this live with these guys. Yeah, you know, he's like, nah, I ain't racist. You know, I wasn't on that type of time and blah, blah, blah. And they still got the goof troop with him. Yeah. <laughs> with him. And he promoting like, oh, stop saying I'm on coke and I'm on me, I'm on liquor and I do shrooms. Like, that's good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know, like, it's better than he say, I'm on shrooms. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're you a You know what it is? Shrooms is a more classier drug. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't dealing with that low level cocaine uh, stuff. Nah, man. Like, it's you're still a professional athlete, and it's still a bad look to the kids that look up to you. Because, Ryan, uh, yo, believe it or not, Ryan, you have the kids. Kids look up to you. You know how many kids want me to train them boxing? We got two new kids joining us in, in camp. You know how they got into boxing and wanted to uh, learn to, excuse my, my, I mean, three new kids that's joining us in the camp. You know what I'm saying? And you know, one of the young men, you know why he wanted to, uh, for me to train him in boxing? Ryan Garcia. <laughs> Ryan Garcia, not Tink, not anybody, Ryan Garcia. And so now you are a fan of Ryan Garcia, and, and this is what you use, and, and this is what happens. So when you're a fan of Ryan Garcia, 
and you're using that as like, look, I'm gonna use this as as this is the guy that I'm following, and then he's using it like I'm gonna promote drug use. It's a bad look, especially when you got kids looking up to you. It's horrible. Yeah, look for me. People talk about Ryan Garcia being banned, and they automatically related to the comments that he made. But I don't think it's just the comments. I think there's genuine concern about his mental um, and possibly the repeated head trauma taking its toll on Ryan Garcia. So when you talk about the ban, for me, I think that's more the reason why he's been banned as opposed to what he's been saying or doing. What he's been saying or doing is the result of the repeated brain trauma and, you know, the issues that he's having. And so one of the things people do when they have a uh, brain trauma is they try to self-medicate. So they use like alcohol, they use drugs, they do all types of things to like help them feel better. And so what Ryan Garcia, although he's not saying it and he may not even be able to identify it, he could be going through that. And so like, no, 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 bro. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right with everything you were saying. And I'm going to let you finish cooking. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, um, I think that's the main reason why he's been suspended and banned. So people try to relate it to just his speech. That's just a result of the bigger issue, right? And so you can see when he's speaking with, like, Keyshawn, you can see when he's speaking with Shakur and everything, He's just vibing. But as Trill pointed out, that dude shouldn't be around Ryan. That dude is a hanger on. Like Shakur was saying, that's the dude they sent to the store. That's the store run guy. Like, that guy doesn't look like he adds any value to Ryan Garcia's life, in my personal opinion. I don't know what he does, but he's not his workout partner. <laughs> he's not giving him no solid advice. Like, don't press in on that. You know, like I know if I was if I was a friend, if I was around my friend and my friend was was on spaces or whatever, uh, dropping the N word and saying all types of stuff like I would check them like, yo, what are you doing? Like, you can't be doing this. You can't be saying this type of stuff like and personally, I'm not going to stay around for it. Like this dude is there drinking. Ryan's drinking. He's drinking. They sitting there laughing. It's doing whatever. Like, I think Ryan got a lot going on. And he's talking about making a fight with Shakur. He's talking about all this. He needs to worry about getting reinstated. And I think when the time comes, he's going to have to show what has he done to improve his condition, to improve himself, to change. And he's not showing that. I don't think he'll ever get reinstated at the rate it's going. Because what he needs to be doing is showing that he's making the changes. He's getting the help. He He's mentally stable, and he's able to continue boxing. But he's not showing that. So, to me, I think he's in a really bad spot, and he doesn't realize it yet. Because I don't think he's going to get his license back. Because everyone's sitting around thinking it's about the stuff he's saying. It's about his lack of mental awareness. It's about... The fact he's spiraling, at, he's spiraling out. And remember, before the Javier Fortuna fight, he had to take time off for mental health issues. Now he's out here admittedly doing shrooms, smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, trashing his ex-wife's house, saying his ex-wife is cheating on him, which is an oxymoron. It's just ridiculous, right? Doing all types of crazy stuff. Like, he's spiraling out. And I think, like, it may be a neurological issue. It may be CTE. But until he shows otherwise, he may never get licensed again. So it was sad watching it for me because I'm like, yo, he doesn't get it. And he's not going to get it. And I hope he does before it's too late. Um, <clears throat> off the record, this is just for the Boxing Bros family. You know, bro, when you said something, it actually triggered something that I was reading. You know, um psychedelics they've been talking about using psychedelics and for brain injuries and stuff like that do you i was thinking maybe ryan was probably misinformed 
and <clears throat> probably got people <laughs> going and they're like, hey, maybe, because when you said that about, you know, the CT and the stuff like that, I was like, maybe he has somebody that was missing. But I'm like, maybe you need these psychedelics to help you, because the thing that he was saying, it helps you think a different. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you say that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially about yeah. shrooms. It makes you think on a different level. And like I said, I'm not. Uh, uh, I've been. I've been around the block once or twice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 you know, party, party. Not with 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 Diddy, but with some shrooms. You know, and um, I wasn't thinking on a different level. It was like just laughing and you know, hallucinating and stuff like that. But then I did read something about how these psychedelic drugs have been uh, used to help people with certain type of uh, mental, I mean, brain trauma, brain injuries, and stuff like that. Um, do you, I was thinking that maybe he was misinformed, and maybe somebody was telling him, like, hey, this can help you with this, that, and the third. That's not, I don't think that's the psychedelics, though, Ryan, you know, that they was talking about. No, maybe, but it's just sad. It's just sad to watch, but I do think that um, there's concern about brain trauma and and like his neurological. Yeah, the drugs. Yeah. 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 When you hit, when you said that, it was like bang. Oh, I was just remember I was just reading the sign about the psychedelic drugs or something. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is Andre Ward coming back to fight Canelo Alvarez. Listen. Andre Ward said he has an announcement to make on Monday. And he's been training. You saw he's sparring, bud. Remember, bro, when I said we've been saying a lot of things? We asked, is Andre Ward coming back a long time ago? Mm -hmm. Remember, check the search engine. Because we were like, yo, this ain't no regular training (laughs) that Dre is doing. Like, we was like, yo. This don't look normal. Like, we don't go in there, hit the bag, and do whatever. But he was doing some other stuff. And then you saw, like, he had everyone around him. And then you saw him sparring Bud. And I'm like, you give me Bud work for it, man. (laughs) You know, it just. So we're going to take a look at what Andre Ward posted. And then we'll discuss it. All right, bro. Let's take a look. So that was the video, and here's the caption. I want all the smoke in all caps. So this is what Dre posted. Andre Ward is 40, Trill Dollar Bill, Hall of Famer already. Mm-hmm. Trill is the Hall of Famer, Andre Ward, going to make a comeback. You can pre- predict against whoever. I'm just... We just talk about Canelo because that's the popular exactly. fight. Obviously, that's the big money fight. But do you think he's making a comeback? And if so, um, you- yes, yes, yes. Dre is coming back. Dre is coming back. <laughs> um, but hopefully, you know, I don't know who he's coming back in, but it's not going to be against Canelo for the first two fights. You know, this is the fight that people wanted before uh, Dre retired and they couldn't make the fight happen. This is who Dre wanted to fight. Um this is the only one that I thought would give Saul troubles, you know what I'm saying, at that time, you know, was uh, was Dre. Um, do I feel the same way? Not right now, you know, because he's been off for a while. He's been laid off for a while. But after we see him get in there and dust off of that, that Ray Russ off, I'm going to be calling Dre a bully, you know what I'm saying? Leave Saul alone. <laughs> <laughs> you left. You left. <laughs> nah, but um, now nah, I'm happy for Dre, man. He let his body rest, and you know, he really thought he was done with this sport. You know, Dre's a good guy. He's always been our, our, my guy, man. Um, uh, yeah, man. JC, yo, I knew something was up though. 
you know, the way they was throwing away all this money, Drake kept saying it. Yo, they throwing all this money around. You know what I'm saying? What was them throwing money around when I was around like that? You know what I'm saying? They were saying Drake's been saying that. Drake's been saying that, like, hey, they've been throwing all these type. I don't know. I might have to dust off the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday's prices <laughs> is not today's <laughs> prices. <laughs> he was like, oh, no. She was like, babe, you know, we don't have to be safe. You see that check they got? <laughs> dust, off, dust the boxing gloves off. You know what I'm saying? Baby, mm-hmm. you really don't need to be fighting. Like, hey. You see them checks, they be coming. I ain't trying to be sitting up here with Tim Bradley doing these commentaries. <laughs> <laughs> with Tim? Nah. You see Kriegel be losing his mind. Kriegel don't even sit at the desk no more. <laughs> Kriegel don't even sit at the desk no more. <laughs> nah, nah he's like, nah. And, and shout out to Dre. He don't care, man. He's trying to get that bread. And, and rightfully so, you know. At one time, he left. He left the sport with a huge deal. I remember HBO had put a, a lot of money on it. It's not the money that these fighters are getting now. But back then, it was some dollars, you know? But, uh, yeah, I ain't mad at Dre, man. I just think he needs to move right because he has been out of the sport for a while, you know? Move right and then, you know, get into one of these big fights so he can get the money that he, you know, that he deserves. Look. You said it. We There's a documentary about Andre Ward. You should check it out. It's SOG. It's on Showtime. I don't know if his career earnings were what they should have been based on his career. And he had to sit on the shelf for a little bit. And then he had the two big fights with Kovalev. He's financially responsible. He also has made money commentating and doing all these things. He, he promote, he, I know he was promoting Shakur. I'm, I, I believe he's still involved with promoting Shakur. I don't know that for certain, but what I can say is like you said, dollar bill compared to what he was making back then. And they tell you one of them documentary, <laughs> he can make his career earnings in like two or three fights. He can make more in two or three fights coming back than he made in his entire career before that and we're talking about you know he made enough money to live a good life so i talk about this all the time with athletes because when you're in the moment you feel like you can do it forever you feel like you could compete for forever but you know every athlete's time will come where you have to retire and you don't have millions coming in but you still have to maintain a lifestyle and you need to make sure that you make enough money in your career to maintain your lifestyle after boxing so so when people get mad or talk trash about fighters and they say like oh you're advocating certain things you are being ridiculous so let me break it down even further i don't believe that it's smart for a fighter like canelo alvarez to fight killer after killer after killer after killer because you are shortening your career i think that you fight one killer. You take a tune-up to keep the shoot. I don't even call it a tune-up. You you take a, a, a you take a decent fight, a mid-level contender, keep the tool sharp, then you fight another killer. Depending on how that fight goes, you win easy. One mid-level fight, keep the tool sharp, fight another killer. If you fight it one killer and it's a tough, grueling fight, but you pull it off and you win. You recover, one keep the tool shot fight, another keep the tool shot fight, and then another killer. Because it's a business at the end of the day. And you must make as much money as you can, and you must maintain your brand and do all these things. That's why I don't get mad at fighters when they do showcase fights. That's why people people say, like, oh, you're advocating. <laughs> you know I'm not. I, you don't understand, bro. You can't have one tough fight after another and fully recover and be 100%. You wouldn't know that if you ever boxed. Most people who never box think that it's possible for you to go in the ring, have a badass fight, a tough fight, and then six months later, go and have another tough fight. Then six months later, 
going like are you serious you clearly know nothing about what you're talking about you can't do that it's impossible you're just breaking your body down you're just saying i want to show in my career you don't even treat your car like that even your car needs a tune-up even your car needs an oil change even your car needs you to stop and refuel it with gas like so again people do all the stuff but so to point what trail saying if andre war is going to come back i hope it's not canelo the very first fight but see where your body's at you know fight someone decent but i think there's a lot of good fights out there for him david benavidez is a good fight for him in my opinion he could fight david benavidez you got uh edgar berlinga out there you got uh David Morrow out there, you have some good fights out there for for Andre Ward. And, you know, maybe he has a tune-up. Like you said, Dollar Bill, he looks good in the tune-up. Now the world's talking. We want to see Dre against the winner of Better BL Baval. We want to see Dre against Canelo. All he needs to do is go out there and perform. And, again, he's going to make the bread. For, for 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 his comeback fight, he's going to make bread. And an opponent doesn't even have to be a killer. Look good against that guy. Now let's throw you in with a killer. Mo money, mo money, mo money. I'll close by saying this though. Hypothetically, if forty-year-old Andre Ward fights thirty-four-year-old Canelo Alvarez, and he loses to Canelo Alvarez. A bunch of you will celebrate that defeat. A bunch of you will give Canelo Alvarez credit for that defeat. A bunch of you will not be calling Andre Ward old. And guess what? I will give credit to Canelo Alvarez as well because I'm a no excuse type of guy. Now, on the flip side, if Andre Ward goes in there at 40 and he defeats a 34 year old Canelo Alvarez, he deserves credit. And it's only a testament to his greatness, which is the same thing people would say about Vasily Lomachenko if he goes in there at 36 and beats a 29-year-old Javante Tank Davis. See, that's what you call being objective. It's not about making excuses for fighters you like and then, oh, what is and that. No, fighters fight. That's the name of the game. Would Andre Ward have a better chance against anybody he's going to fight if he was still in his 20s? Absolutely. But that's not the way life works. We age. Your mind gets smarter, though. Bernard Hawkins was beating guys in his 40s off of wisdom, boxing knowledge. So you can't. Canelo does it right now. We saw Canelo do that to Hami Munguia. Canelo just IQ'd Hami Munguia to death. That's what he did in their fight. He just straight IQ'd the younger. That's what you do. So, again, there's advantages and disadvantages. There's never a perfect time to make a fight. No excuses. But if Dre comes back, I'm looking forward to it because I think he's still in shape. I think he's still got his faculties. Remember, he hasn't been taking punishment all this year, all these years. He's been sitting there letting his body heal, so he may be fresher than most. Yeah, question. What, do you, what weight class do you think Dre will come in at? 168, 175, or cruiser? Wow. He ended at 175, right? Yeah, I think he ended at 175. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he can make 168 at this point, but I say 175 maybe. 175 or Cruz. How how would you feel about a return belt against uh the the what was the guy's name the, from New Jersey, the iron worker that far Bernard Hawkins? Joe was it Joe Smith? Joe Smith? Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a good comeback fight. Joe Smith, he, yeah, I mean, he can, but Joe Smith just got cooked by a better beer. <laughs> like, the rush dog, that's what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? And he hasn't fought in a while, you know, either. So you A know, good comeback good. fight for, for Andre Ward, let yeah. me see, at 175? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Not something too tough. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're yeah, right, uh... <laughs> Let's see what um happens with Buwatsi and uh the Hutchins Hutchins kid. Okay, okay. Yeah. Willie, Hutch, Willie Hutchins. If Willie Hutchins beats um Buwatsi, that's a great comeback fight to me. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even if Buwatsi beats uh, Hutchins, I still think Buwatsi might be good. Oh, Anthony Yard. You don't think so, uh, Andre? Andre Wood, Andre sure. Wood? I think I just think you know after this long layoff, you know, I just think you know just to see how it feels to be in there, take some of that you know off. That oh, so, you, so you want him in there with 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 with, with easy easy work. I mean, I want him in there with, you know, it's eight ounce gloves. You know what I'm saying? I want, you know, so he can feel how it feels, you know. Lyndon, Lyndon Arthur? You know what I'm saying? That's too easy. That's a little too easy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Nah, that's, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I, it's good. It would be good to see Dre back in the ring, man. The last topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is basically our prediction for Joe Joyce versus Derek Tesora. So we're asking who wins, Joe Joyce or Derek Ward Tesora. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at the buildup. So the buildup hasn't been as exciting as you would normally see from Derek Ward Tesora, <laughs> but still quite entertaining. So again, here's another language warning. From uh, Derek Ward Chisora is, is going to be speaking. So if there's some young kids or people who shouldn't be hearing foul language, get them away now. Press pause. Listen to this later. All right. Press and play. Your physiotherapy is a pussy. Yeah, everybody's a pussy. a pussy. A few moments later. You know I'm not a pussy. Yeah, I know. So we're going to yeah, fight so it out. A pussy for me. All right. Well, okay. You're not. Yeah, I didn't call you a pussy, did I? No, you didn't. Yes, that's what are you calling me a pussy for. Okay, maybe you're not, but like yeah, exactly. we're gonna See, have a good fight. You, this is what I tell you, you this is not your game, bro. Huh? You're not about this life, bro. If I, if I call you a pussy, I will never take it back. But I'm just showing you this is not about this is not it. This is not your game, bro. Your physiotherapy is a right, pussy. So yeah, everybody's pussy. a pussy. Uh, I'm gonna show you one more uh, video of Derek Watchers. <laughs> Shout out to the main DC. <laughs> what the reason why this video is important is because Derek announces in this video that he has three fights left. Well, let's take a listen. It's gonna be a good fight because I only got three fights left. But this is my way to say goodbye to the boxing world I love so much. Joe is not gonna win. I will tell you that now. You know, um he can train as much as he want, he can do as much as he want, but when it comes to the real grind of it, I'm more vicious than him. I'm more crazy than him. Um, I fear no man. And um, I'm excited. Don't worry about it. From, there's, no, I don't, there's no feeling each other out on the first round. I'm going in, as you guys know already. I don't, they don't call me War Chisora for no reason. I am going in, and that's it. It's going to be a good fight because... I only got three. All right, so you heard what he said. From round one, Derek Warchazora is coming to fight. Trill Dollar Bill. <laughs> um, What's your reaction? Shout out to, to DC. You know what I'm saying? That's my man. You know, um, Derek Chisora done won me over. <laughs> you know, at a time, me and him had beef. You know what I'm saying? I almost took him behind the buildings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but that's my man. Um DC against JJ. Um both guys have seen better days. I think um Derek to show I like how he's talking. That was hilarious. Like you ain't even about who apologizes. But <laughs> 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 that was I was on the floor, you know what I'm saying? That shit shows you ain't about this. Um, here's the thing. First four rounds, DC is going to be on fire. Maybe even five. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's going to be on fire. He's going to be on fire. Um, if Joe Joyce can withstand, you know what I'm saying, the fire for that five rounds, then maybe he got a chance to nick it out later. But let's tell the truth about Joe Joyce. His de- his defense is his face. And we <laughs> see that his face has been chipped apart. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Now, let's just see in those five rounds, if Derek lands something within those five rounds, it could completely shatter what's left of Joe Joyce's face. You know? That granite chin has been getting chopped away. It was being chopped, chopped, chopped. 
It was getting nicks taken away every time he was fighting. You know what I'm saying? I even said it when I hit that Parker fight. Parker hit him with everything but the kitchen sink. Parker got tired for beating on him. Kind of like Havacek and Daniel Dubois. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Parker got tight. And then that's when Joe Joyce came on. But I thought that that fight right there took something out of Joe Joyce. Because I don't care what you think about it. He's still, uh, Parker's still a 200 and something pound man. Dropping flush shots on him. Parker still got good wins after that fight. Exactly. Beat the guy that took him out. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Parker was winning until he got tired. And he was laying in some vicious. So that next fight, when you seen him get in there, and he lost. I was like, hey, <laughs> I've seen that coming. I think that it's he had better days. That fighting style only lasts. So I've been telling y'all, that fighting style only lasts for so long. You don't have a long career fighting that way. You don't have longevity in the sport fighting that way. You, yeah, they'll give you those exciting fights that the fans love so much. But if you ain't getting those paydays, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to last in the sport that long. It's sad, but it's true. Um, so I, it basically, to me, it's 50 50. You know, if Derrick Shashore comes out here like he usually do, you know, like a typhoon in those first couple rounds, and Joe Joyce's chin is not where we, he used to be, then he could be out. Even his face is not the same no more. Like, it puffs up and sw- it's not the same no more. You know? And Joe Joyce... If you can't withstand that 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 uh that that firestorm from DC is going listen, you're gonna be out there too. But I also think for uh Derek, Father Time. Mm-hmm. Father Time. And we seen you, you've been getting, you know, they just call wheel you out because they know you sell tickets <laughs> and people love you. You know what I'm saying? So they they wheel you out. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying that. I said that the last time when everybody was saying, yo, bro G was like, yeah, he got to retire. I said, no, they're not. They're going to keep wheeling them out as long as they get O2 is there. They got a date at the O2. They're going to keep wheeling them out to the O2 because the fans love them out there. You know what I'm saying? That boy going to keep fighting until he can't fight no more. And I mean, that's the problem. Like, so it's to me, it's a 50-50. It's a 50-50 with this fight. All right, true. I agree with about 95% of what you said. The 5% why I disagree is they're not willing out Derek Ward Chisora. He's running out there. They don't have to wheel out Derek Ward Chisora. Derek Ward Chisora lives for this. It, he can't do anything else. Okay? He doesn't want to do anything else. Okay? Like, he wants to go out there in front of the old two. Okay, listen, this is what Derek lives for. I'm telling you, watch the walk. I'm telling you, watch, just watch. Watch Chisora's walk to the ring. It's like a god is in the building. Like, it's like, it's legendary. It's like, it's like, you know, he he can't, it's the thrill to walk to the ring. And then Chisora goes in there from the moment the bell rings like a buzzsaw and he's looking for the knockout as soon as it, it's just, Everyone knows it. It's just the moment, you know, and Chisora walks in and everyone's, oh, Derek Chisora. And, you know, he's going to come out to some emotional music. You know how Derek is. And then after the fight, win or lose, you go eat five guys with Derek Ward Chisora. That's what happens. We already know it. But here's the deal. This fight means more to Joe Joyce because Joe Joyce – has a victory over Daniel Dubois, who is currently the IBF email champion. And he has a victory over Joseph Parker, a knockout victory over Joseph Parker. And even Jane couldn't stop Joseph Parker. And Jane's the one who beat him twice. So if he goes out there and he has a good, impressive showing against Derek Warchazora and he's able to stop Derek Warchazora, Derek Warchazora recently has been giving good fighters tough fights. He gave Joseph Parker a tough fight, enough to get a rematch. He gave Usyk a tough fight, 
enough to make the Lulu within the fight. So he's been doing well. So if Joe Joyce can go out there and he can stop Derek Chisora or at least beat Derek Chisora decisively, but to me, he, he should stop Derek if he wants to really get his buzz back. But if he goes out there and he stops him, then people are going to ask the question, was Jane just kryptonite for, Derek, for, for Joe Joyce? And maybe Joe Joyce will still beat Daniel Dubois and still beat Joseph Parker. And maybe that's the next fight to make, Joseph Parker, Joe Joyce too, if he can go out there and he can do what he needs to do. But if he goes out there and he loses to Derek Ward Chisora, it's over. You pointed it out, Trill. Chisora can lose this fight, and it's not over. It's not over for Chisora is a legend. He got three fights. It don't matter what you do. He's this is one of them. He's going to he's going to he's going to sell out the O2. I got two fights for Derek Chisora that sell out the O2 right now. Hear me out. Hear me out. After Joe Joyce, win or lose, Derek Ward Chisora versus Deontay Wilder in the O2. <laughs> What's up? Sell out. All right. The last fight, Derek Ward Chisora versus Luis Ortiz at the O2. Sell out. Why not? Two, two, and, and, and all these guys still get to make money. So for me, it's about Joe Joyce versus uh, Derek Ward Chisora. True, I don't think you actually made a prediction on this fight, man. Who you got? I didn't make a prediction on this fight. I said it was 50-50. Um, I ain't never <laughs> said this. I've never, I've never said this. I've never said this. You know what? Joe, Joe, Joe Joyce made that man. So Joe Joyce got this man, but... Joe Joyce got this man, but man, listen, I'm man, listen, I wouldn't be man. Yeah, I'm going Joe Joyce on this one. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go deep. <laughs> yeah, my prediction is that uh, Derek Ward Chisora is going to give him hell. The first four to five rounds, like you say, Dollar Bill, but I think that Derek's going to slow down and then Joe Joyce is going to knock him out similar to what he did to Joseph Parker. Um, I think Jane just hits too hard, bro, because there's enough evidence. He sparked out Joe Joyce. He dropped Joseph Parker twice. He sparked out Deontay Wilder, had the man spinning around, you know. Yeah. Uh, so my man, what'd you say, uh, bro? No, 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 no. I was talking about uh, uh, Joe oh, Joseph. Joe Joyce. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dubois. Yeah, yeah. So. I thought he was doing what G used to always do about uh, Joseph Parker. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, but Jane is, he, he's, he, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a very hard puncher. So I don't think, uh, Derek Chisora has that punching power, that one punch knockout power, but I just think he's a pest for as long as he has energy. But I do think that Joseph Parker is going to stop him. But I just want to be clear. I'm a Derek Chisora fan. Win or lose, I'm one of those dudes who, if I was in the UK, I would be at the O2 Arena every fight singing old Derek Tesora. So, listen, I am a Derek Tesora fan. I also like Joe Joyce. I'm a Joe Joyce fan. Two great guys. Hopefully the fight lives up to the villain, and then they move on to great things. Let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. Thank you for rocking with the Boxing Bros, where we give you our unbiased opinion on the greatest sport ever. That's boxing. I'm the commissioner, Trill Dollar Bill. That's my brother, Caden. It's LLG for life. We the Boxing Bros.